genius for life. Coconut smoothies coming at you. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 51 of 15 Minutes of Genius. We hit the 50 milestone. Now we're trudging slowly but surely towards the big one zero zero. And that's after that. I mean, then we have to go to a thousand. That's just way too many episodes. And I think people will probably uh, be complaining. There's too many 15 minutes of genius episodes. So we'll probably not make it to a thousand, but definitely a hundred. All right. So uh, we have a great guest today. Uh, before introducing him, I want to make a big plug for Mark Nicholas, Mark N at Manhattan Beach Studios.net. He's got the Fancy sports jacket on. He's got the dark blue with the, and that's that Syracuse, Syracuse, I should say. I, I mispronounced your own, you know, your your sweatshirt. Sorry about that. <clears throat> did you go there or no? You did. Okay, so what you're wearing, you actually went there. It's very noble of you, very noble. All right, so again, that's our man, our Syracuse man, Mark Nicholas. All your editing desires, he can do it for you. Great stuff. So let's roll into our guest, Tony Lamb. He is the co-founder of Omni Bev and also a partner in Maven's Creamery. So a little bit about him. It's actually on my phone, so I'm going to switch over here. Tony is a Vietnamese immigrant refugee. He is a successful serial entrepreneur and a 16-year 16, 16 veteran in the food and CPG space. He is also a Shark Tank winner. Tony sits on the board for five different tech startups. He is currently the co-founder of Omni Bev and is bringing Vietnamese coffee mainstream. Love the sound of that. He enjoys helping his local community and paying it forward by mentoring the next generation of young aspiring entrepreneurs to reach their fullest potential. Tony is married to Van Lamb and has two sons named Damon and Andy. Tony, how's it going? Going good. Going good, Alex. Thank you for having me on your show. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I, I literally, uh, I've been Going back and forth with Tony on LinkedIn, just a lot of messaging over the years. And then finally, we just decided, let's hop on the phone. Last week, hopped on the phone. We thought it was going to be a 20-minute conversation, and we were on the phone for an hour and a half. <laughs> and uh, so yeah. all good stuff. Yeah, really just awesome to get in touch with you and really just find out more about your story. And then when I found out about your story, I'm like, i got to bring this guy on the show. I mean, come on. And here he is right now. So... Let's roll into it, okay? Let's talk about, yeah. first off, Dude. your story, right? You have a very, very powerful story. You're a Vietnamese refugee. Um, you came here. You became a success. You started some businesses. Tell us more about your entire story from being in Vietnam, coming over here, and then uh, starting uh, different businesses. Yeah, so I, I came over. I was only three months old right during the fall of Saigon. So three months, uh, three months old, my family had to make a decision. Do we stay or do we go? And uh, my father and mother were about 20, 22 and 24 at that age. And so they decided to flee Vietnam. Uh, we were very fortunate that a, a Catholic family in the States sponsored my family of uh, my mom, my dad, and my grandmother and an uncle. And they brought basically brought us in uh, into their home. So we um immigrated to the u.s down in southern california and uh, we were there for a good four years before we went up to the bay area um so i don't have much of an accent but uh i went to education you know regular kindergarten to all the way to high school and then um went to college at cal poly slow so go mustangs alex yeah um, it was great Fel to, to fellow you know, alumni. Hear that you also graduated, yeah. So just I just barely university, just barely graduated. So, <laughs> um, but you know, majored in business, and um, you yep. know, it's kind of funny because um, I actually ended up going to a, uh, a big corporation at that time at Cisco, and I just didn't know what I was going to do um, in terms of business. But uh, I always had that itch. I just didn't know what I was going to do, and then that's when. Um, I got my first taste while I was at Cisco, a friend of mine, colleague, coworker of mine, introduced me to Wingstop. So next thing I knew, um, I, she said, you should really look into this. And so that's what I did. I investigated, researched it, flew all the way to Texas at the headquarters, uh, met the executive management team. So uh, me and my partners signed up for five stores in the Bay Area. 
So I had the second wing stop in the entire Bay Area 16 wow. years ago. Hmm. Yeah. And, it, and it, uh, Wingstop, from that... Wingstop was started by John, El John Elway. Is that correct? Wasn't it? Or am I just... <laughs> no, am I think no. Am I thinking of something else? <laughs> you, you know, the, the spokesperson for Wingstop at that time in the early days was Troy Aikman. Troy Aikman. Okay, the other the other big yes. quarterback. I, I, I always confuse yes. those guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that really helped. So yeah. you, guys, you guys really grew a lot. Um, you were one of the early adopters in Wingstop, you know, before it really became a thing and a big national chain. So how many, how many stores, I did uh, watch your video with your story, you know, that uh, was in your email. How many chains yeah. did you at, at one point own? Uh, how many are you running now? And how was that experience and like being kind of at the early stage of a growing um, franchise restaurant? Yeah, so we signed up for five and I still have five today. So we had the second wing stop in the Bay Area. Fast forward 16 year, years later, there are now 50. And again, I own five of the 50 um, wing stops in the Bay Area. And so I also run the marketing for the wing stops in the Bay Area. So I oversee the budget, uh, co-op budget for all 50 stores. Um, so with this, uh, with this budget, we're able to buy TV ads, radio ads, digital marketing, and sports sponsorship with the uh, really official wings of the Golden State Warriors as well. So I've nice. um, been a Warriors fan all my life, and it's just great to be able to be affiliated with my favorite uh, basketball team. Oh, yeah. I, I got friends that are that are up there in the Bay Area, and like when like the Warriors were like going to the finals like year after year, like back to back to back. He would just rub it in my face. You know, he's like, Lakers, what? <laughs> Lakers, what? You know, like, it got that intense. He would call me be like, Lakers didn't even make it to the playoffs, and here we are in the finals. You, know? <laughs> you, guys are, uh, you're, uh -huh. you guys are a feisty bunch up there in the Bay Area yes. when it comes to basketball. Remember the, the Kings and Lakers feud yep. with Bibby? Like, yep. I think it was 20 years ago. Insane. Right. I remember I mean, that. And, and what's yeah. interesting, not to get too off track, but at Cal Poly Slow, where we both went to school, right, where you graduated with honors and I barely even made it onto stage to get my diploma, uh, or degree, I should say. Slow, San Luis Obispo, is halfway between L.A. and San Francisco. So there's people from the south, you know, Southern California, people from Northern California. Whenever a game was on, right, I remember my first year in the dorms, 2001, when it was Mike Bibby, the Kings, versus, like, Shaq and Kobe, you know, the Lakers, it was like a few people were fighting in the hallway, you know, based over these games. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. I just uh, – random tangent, just wanted to mention. Let's go into your brand, um, Omnibev, yeah. and the Vietnamese yeah. coffee. Tell us more about this product, and I'm sure Mark kind of flashed some photos on the screen showing the product. Tell sure. us more about it. Tell us more about what makes this so special. Yeah, so uh, we are the first Vietnamese um, authentic – cold brew comp coffee company uh, in the world. And so the story is my partner, Tammy, um, the beans are from her family farm in Vietnam. So we import the beans from Vietnam to California where it's brewed and bottled, okay? Uh, Vietnam is the second largest producer and exporter of coffee beans. Not too many people know that. Uh, and so we're here to also educate the consumer. You know, it takes a lot of people to educate the consumer about that. But uh, Vietnam, when people drink Vietnamese coffee, they think of really strong coffee, right? And that's because uh, Vietnam export more of the, the robusta beans, which, which are the beans that contain more of the caffeine. And so within that 10 ounce bottle, we're able to have a blend of uh, our Arabica beans with our robusta beans. And it gives it that high caffeine content, which is about three cups of caffeine in that bottle. Wow. So it definitely keeps you awake by drinking one bottle of uh, Omnibev, Good Morning Saigon. That's the most popular one. So um, typically when you go to a Vietnamese restaurant or a cafe and you say, I want Vietnamese coffee, it's basically coffee over condensed milk. Okay. And we've been able to bottle that. No one else has. And we're able to maintain a nine month shelf life with our product as well yeah paging all buyers paging all buyers if you <laughs> want to bring in this product if you if you think cold brew is doing well in your set which i'm sure it is bring this product yes. in it, it has a it's a local story <clears throat> against all odds 
great product, specialized ingredients, tastes really good, three cups of caffeine worth in one bottle. I mean, your customers, when you bring it to your stores, are going to be freaking wired after having this product. <laughs> They're going to have so much energy. Absolutely. They're going to buy everything else off the shelf and to go to produce, you know, and then they're just going to clean out your entire store <laughs> with that much caffeine. So love it, man. So where are yeah. you? Where are you now? And I know you're doing some mm -hmm. expansion when we talked offline, you know, in NorCal, SoCal, where can it be found right now to get totally wired and get caffeinated? Tell us. Yeah. So today we're actually uh, in Erewhon uh, as we speak. Uh, so in Southern California, we're also in about 80 convenience stores throughout the California. The best way to know where to find us is on our website, www.omnibev.com. We have a store locator tool there. Uh, we're quickly expanding into a lot more stores. We're going to be uh, uh, at the, the nugget here in about two more weeks, starting in March. And um, the biggest deal that we've signed to date, Alex, is um, with, our, with our distributor, Cormart. Uh, they have access to 45,000 convenience stores. And my company won the competition uh, to get our products into the convenience store. So I figure we're, we're probably going to be in about three to 5,000 convenience stores throughout the country by the end of this year. Wow. So, um, mm. yeah. That, that's huge. It's, and I uh, think, it's... you know, and like for entrepreneurs watching, right, you got to find out where your product's going to do best, right? You know, you got to, where is, where is the niche for this product, right? Our product is not everywhere, right? It's in more of the Whole Foods. It's in, you know, more of the natural specialty and also the mass market like the Targets. But I think like I have an intuition and I'm sure you have the same intuition being a serial entrepreneur mm -hmm. <clears throat> that this product, besides being a great fit for like, you know, larger natural chains like the Nuggets and the Air Wands and, you know, Whole Foods, this can do really well in convenience stores. I feel people that go to convenience stores want caffeine. They want something. Right. It's, you know, the, the set is getting healthier and healthier. 7-Eleven has their sip and snacks program, right, where they're bringing in healthy beverages and healthy foods. And convenience stores are the same way. I mean, I walk into convenience stores in L.A. and San Francisco. I see Health Aid. I see Harmless Harvest. I see Mush. You know, I see all these really great brands that are were only in Whole Foods before, and now they're in convenience. So when does this all roll out to get into? Is it just like gas stations, convenience stores? Is it going to be certain metro areas? What's the plan for distribution with Cormark? Yeah, so uh, we're looking at... 7-Eleven, Circle K's, and the gas stations. So we're already today in seven, the, the brand 76, Chevron, a couple Shell station, and we're looking to roll out into a lot of the AM, PM's uh, gas stations as well. So um, yeah, we were, they love our RTD, our ready to drink coffee. And so uh, we're, you know, we're, we're gonna be rolling that out. And then we later found out that there's now opportunity for us to serve hot coffee. So people who want to have a coffee program, the convenience stores, we're also going to be selling our beans there as well. So not only it. do we have the cold brew, but we also have the ground beans too. I to love that. Hot coffee. I love that. And it really completes that story about how Vietnamese coffee beans are very, very special. And by having like a bag of it at the store so you can brew it at home really reemphasizes how special the ingredients are, right, for the, uh, for the consumer. And I feel like, too, that one, one tip I have, a plug, but uh, Brandon Lutz at Brand Foundry, he has amazing promotional gear, like, you know, like, you know, shelf floaters and like, you know, like the bottle, you can like nail it to like, you know, a lamppost right outside of the gas station. All these things are really awesome that work really well. And, you know, like when you go into convenience stores, you see like shelf tags and floaters and like banners and things like yep. that. Totally recommend, Tony, that uh, you reach out to Brandon Lutz at Brand Foundry. I'll tag him in this, uh, in the comments in the video, because you'll do even better. You have more presence in these stores. Let's roll into, and well, good luck with that Thank launch. You. I know it's going to do well and can't wait to have it locally. And, you know, I don't, I don't get gas anymore at uh, gas stations. I have a hydrogen car, but I definitely <laughs> go to 7-Elevens. So I'll make sure to uh, let me know what stores you're in. I'll check it out. One of my good friends sure. owns a 7-Eleven, actually, in Redondo Beach. So I'll send you her oh. info. You can get in there for sure. Yeah, please. Cormark delivers there. Yeah, they're on Torrance Boulevard and, and Prospect correct. in Redondo Beach. So shout out to Great. 
Shout out to them. I won't say their names, but shout out to them. So <laughs> let's get into your Shark Tank experience, okay? So you're a partner yeah. also in Maven's Creamery, um, which is a delicious, you know, kind of little ice cream sandwich. But basically, you guys run Shark Tank. You were you were not personally on there, but your partners were. Uh, tell us more about that experience. And then, Mark, if you can pull up that Shark Tank picture while um, – while he's talking to us about it. Yeah, so um, we, we started uh, with our Macron ice cream sandwich uh, in a garage, Alex. That's where we started, in a 400-square-foot garage. And uh, I fell in love with the product. Um, I came in as an investor and their chief sales and marketing officer. I knocked on all the doors, you know, the hustle that you got to do with a brand-new product, went to all the restaurants, uh, signed up about 120 restaurants uh, with our product, right? And then um, one day, um, the buyer at Safeway happened to go to one of the restaurants that carried our, our refrigerator with our product. He tasted it and you know fell in love with it. And so he said, "Wow, let's let's contact this company and see if they want to sell our their products at Safeway." Sure enough, we went there. Uh, we met with them. We gave them the product. Next thing we knew, we we're now in Safeway and then Whole Foods caught on and they said, wow, I, we love this product. And so we created an all natural macaron ice cream sandwich with that. Mm. So during this time, we were looking to raise some money and it was advertised that Shark Tank was uh, at CES. So anybody who um, you know was uh, wanting to pitch to Shark Tank, as long as you went to CES, you know, camped out in the morning, you had the opportunity to, um, you know, pitch. So Shark Tank, let's get back to that. So uh, Maven's Creamery, you went to the CES show, you auditioned, your partners got on the show. Tell us more about the effects, the experience, um, how it influenced and really uh, grew and bolstered Maven's Creamery. Creamery, tell us more about that. Yeah, so on the show we got uh, we got one person, one shark to bite on us, and it was Barbara Corcoran. And from that experience, uh, obviously our sales went up. We didn't have a uh, e-commerce business at that time, uh, but for sure when we we turned on e-commerce, uh, you know, sales we got very close to six digits. I, I recall during that time. Mm, nice. But um, you know, uh, uh, all the stores obviously uh, benefited from from that Shark Tank uh, experience, and so um, we're not, from that we were able to expand to twenty two other states that we were not on the East Coast. We were able to pick up those deals as well. So uh, yeah, our our company uh, sales almost doubled uh, during that year after the after the airing of the show. That is amazing. And the product, hey, by the way, you know, not to detract too much away from Omnibev, but with Maven's Creamery, fantastic product, tastes amazing. It's like a decadent tree, but super clean. And the story is awesome. So make sure to check it out. YouTube, you know, just type in or search, you know, Maven's Creamery, Shark Tank. You can hear the story behind how they arrived here, immigrants as well, refugees, and created this brand. So Amazing story. I'm glad you invested in them and you're a partner with them and supporting them. Thank you. So uh, what else with Omnibev before we uh, before we go to our next segment? Tell us more about innovation. What's next for you guys in a couple minutes? Just uh, what's in the trajectory for Omnibev? Um, we're, we, we got some more deals on the table. Uh, looking at in, getting into Whole Foods, uh, more of the natural grocery stores. Uh, Costco and Walmart also hit us up. So, um, you know, my dream of getting into 10,000 locations is becoming a reality. I think we actually could probably hit that within the next uh, two years, I think, to be honest with you, Alex. So yeah, tra trajectory is like this right now. And, you know, very blessed to be in this type of situation. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be in this situation today uh, without that uh, Shark Tank experience because I got, I, I was able to, I was able to network with a lot of um, buyers and, and people in that CPG space, you know, and meet people like you, you know, you're a, you're a Shark Tank alumni as well. So exactly. Shark um, Tank alumni, yeah, just Cal Poly alumni. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Love it. <laughs> but we both love coconut. I mean, there's a lot of, a uh, lot of alignments that we have, you know, we're like just, yeah, yes. definitely kindred spirits. So I think you can get there faster than two years. I think you can get there by the end of 2021. Thrown down the challenge wow. to Tony Lamb, 
the co-founder at Omnibev, <laughs> end of 2021, 10,000 locations. You get half those locations just from 7-Eleven right there. <laughs> So I think you're right. I think you're right, Alex. Yeah. What I think you should do is get a Sprinter van, like a refrigerated Mercedes Sprinter van, wrap it with Omnibev and just go mm -hmm. across the country selling into 7-Elevens. That's what I recommend you do. I, yeah. It might take six months. Uh, when we raise that money, I'm going to take that. I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. And you should raise on WeFunder, man. You know, with Justin, you know, Justin Renfro. We just had him on our show a couple episodes ago, episode 49. So. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. I just talked to Justin. It looks like we are going to set something up. So thank you. Thank you Very so much cool. for that referral. So by the time this yeah. airs, you might be on WeFunder. Okay. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, if you are on WeFunder, because again, we tape this in advance of when we actually air it on LinkedIn yeah. and YouTube. If they're on WeFunder, which I think they will be, make sure to go to Omnibev on WeFunder and invest in this brand. Great story, great brand, great founder, co-founder, and uh, we want to see them succeed. I'm rooting for you, man, and I think it's going to happen. So awesome, Thanks. awesome stuff. Let's go to our next segment. It's called Rapid Fire Questions. Rapid Fire Questions. Here we go. Have you seen this yet All or right. no? Ready. All right, let's do this. No, I haven't, but let's do it. Awesome. So, yeah, yeah, you, you will not know these questions in advance, which makes it even more fun. Here we go. <laughs> NSYNC or Backstreet Boys? NSYNC. First thing you do when you wake up. I think I can guess this one. First thing I wake up. Well, I mean, come on. It's coffee, right? Exactly. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Good morning, Saigon. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Saigon. So, or Vietnam. <laughs> Movie you could watch in a limited amount of times. Uh, my favorite, uh, Tom Hanks. Um, uh, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. I actually, I they used to be my favorite Tom Hanks movie until Castaway. Until I got into this business, and then Castaway became yeah. my favorite because he went. Wow. He, he was he was trying to break open coconuts in part of the movie, you know. So <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, you know, just I fell in love with that right out. They had me at coconuts. Song you can listen to in an unlimited amount of times. Oh, what song? Oh gosh, um, man, I, I'm I just I listen to Maroon Five. <laughs> so. Nice. Uh, the, the what's the song like? Uh, she will be loved. And there's also their yes. big song. I forget. Favorite sport to watch? Uh, basketball. I'm a uh, huge of course. Fan course yeah zoom microsoft teams or google Meet. which which platform do you hate the least hate the least uh <laughs> or do you, you like know, the most? I, uh you know what i use google hangout right now for all my meetings because that, that comes with my subscription with my gmail so exactly justin renfro by the way said that exact thing <laughs> in our interview <laughs> all right so you guys are yeah you're, you guys are aligned too what is your spirit animal Spirit animal. Um, that's a tough one. Um, dog, I think. There you go. <laughs> what What is your uh, uh, window seat or aisle seat in an airplane? Aisle. Peanut butter or almond butter or neither? Almond. I like almond. Omnivore, flexitarian, vegetarian, or vegan? I know you're not a vegan or vegetarian because you own, you know, <laughs> five wing stops. Yes, omnivore. <laughs> omnivore, of course. Cold weather or hot weather? You got both up there in the, in the Bay Area. Yeah, you know, gosh, that's, yeah, uh, hot, hot. LeBron James or MJ? Um. Uh, you know what? As much as I don't like him, I, I still I, I like LeBron though. You know, he's just uh, yeah, yep. he is a goat. He's yeah. he's amazing. He's the king. Yeah. Ginger or turmeric? Uh, ginger. Favorite food? Favorite food or drink? If you're stuck on a deserted island, you cannot say Omnibev, and you cannot say Genius Juice, and you cannot say Maven's Creamery, or Wingstop. <laughs> <laughs> That eliminated oh, your whole gosh. diet. That's your whole diet. Yeah, I know. Right I there. know. This is really difficult. <laughs> um, wow. 
Chinese food. Chinese food. All right. I think they grow yeah. from trees out there, I, I believe. Oh, oh trees. Sorry. Yeah. That could be anything. <laughs> All right, so that is bananas, rapid, bananas. There you go. Rapid fire questions, and that is with Tony Lamb, the co-founder of Omnibev, and also one of the partners in uh, Maven's Creamery, and a partner in Wingstop, and it goes on and on and on. <laughs> serial entrepreneur. He was not lying. He is a serial entrepreneur. So um, yeah, thank you for joining us on episode 51 of 15 Minutes of Genius, Tony. And look forward to just uh, keeping the good vibes going and uh, chatting yeah. and helping you guys out. Thank you. Thank you so much again, Alex, for having me on the show. Awesome. Awesome. Have a wonderful night. All right. Good yeah. luck with your kids. <laughs> Banging on the door. So, all right. So, again, episode 51 of 15 Minutes of Genius in the books, in the box with a ribbon on top. Big plug to Mark Nicholas, Mark and at Beachstudios.net for all your editing desires. He is in the city of what city? Manhattan Beach, of course. All right. So, uh, that is it. And one last thing, stay genius, my friends. Genius for life. Coconut smoothies coming at you.